Oh, hello. Today we're going to look at the painted Octarius uh, terrain that I've uh, been doing over the last couple of days. So what I want to do is go through my very easy method for painting a lot of terrain. Now, I didn't come up with this. It was actually told to me by a Games Workshop employee. I want to say his name was James. I can't remember what his second name was. It was a chap that I met at the open day they had in Nottingham for Kill Team 2018. And he had a little corner and he was teaching people basically how to quickly paint terrain uh, because Kill Team requires a lot, a lot of terrain. Kill Team 2018 required a lot of terrain as well. So this is basically his method, um, as best as I can remember it. And it's how I do all my terrain now, because it gets a really quick, but really straightforward result. So the first thing you're going to want to do, no matter what piece of terrain you're painting, is you're going to undercoat it black. Um, a lot of people, I think one of the comments when I showed the assembled terrain was like, oh yeah, just spray it silver and hit it with a wash. If you're going to wash this much stuff, not only are you going to use basically an entire pot of wash, but it's going to look blotchy. It's going to look blotchy. It's going to look weird. You're going to have to put a lot of wash in to darken it down in all of the recesses. So it's better to go old school and do a heavy dry brush. So you doesn't have to be lead belcher. I did for this one because that was the main color that I was doing for my terrain. But whatever your main color is for your terrain, you do a very heavy dry brush of that over... Uh, black and as you can see a little insert photograph there you don't want to mess around with a your normal palette or um you know whatever normal palette you might use for dry brushing i've got a laser cut dry brushing palette or even but for a job like this just get a bit of cardboard and uh, i don't know if this will make them games workshop used to do big round scenery dry brushes but honestly just go to b q or somewhere and get a big stiff round brush like that one okay loads of paint because you're trying to colour the model primarily over black and you can see the results there at the top of how that looks. So just whack a heavy dry brush over the whole thing, right? The next step is basically just to paint any bits of detail that you fancy. And you can do as much or as little as you want because this is the time consuming step, right? Um, I picked out the bits I picked out. Honestly, a lot of it, the colour choices and stuff, I was using up paint. So, I don't know if you, anyone's old enough to remember the Citadel Foundation paints range with white lids. Spot a few of them knocking around, a green and a yellow um, and a blue. So, I used up a lot of the foundation green, yellow and blue that I had knocking around. I wanted to do a lot of that army green because I kind of think blood axes are the, the coolest orcs. And yeah, I, I don't have my orc commanders anymore. I traded them for extra Krieg. But if I was to do orc commanders, they'd be kind of green and military looking, right? Uh, so a lot of that army green colour, yellow on the tanks and cases and stuff, just because I had the yellow. And then the blue, I basically picked out all the doors and hatches in blue as a kind of mechanical shorthand when I'm playing the game. So if my opponent's ever confused, I can just say, oh, the doors and hatches are in blue so you can move through those freely. Um, yeah, a little bit of red to pick out cables and things. Um, and then I did use some contrast. I think it is the snake bite leather contrast just on random panels to make them stand out to break up the big blocks of color. I don't know whether it's supposed to be a, a, a tin or rust or what, but it looks all right. You know, it breaks it up a little bit. And at that point, you could play on it, but let's be fair, it looks pretty rough. Um, there are. The next two steps are really where I think the magic happens, where you turn what is an extremely rough looking paint job into something that looks like pretty passable at first glance. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to dry brush everything with some Screaming Skull. Obviously, you're going to use a light dry brush of Screaming Skull. You're not trying to colour over everything you've done like you did with the, the, the lead belcher in the first step or whatever your base colour is. But you can highlight everything with, with Screaming Skull. Um, and you could even do this in normal edge painting with a brush. You probably paint an entire space marine and highlight everything on the marine edge. Highlight it really carefully with Screaming Skull and it wouldn't look bad. That's sort of slightly warm off white. Highlight everything. So you're doing a traditional dry brush now. You're not doing a heavy dry brush. You're trying to skim it along and pick off the edges. Yeah, uh, going big with a big brush like that, you're going to go a bit more, a bit too heavy at times. And you'll be, oh, I've put too much on. It doesn't look that bad. Okay, just keep going, wipe a bit off with your finger if you need to, but get that 
Screaming Skull dry brush on there and suddenly the whole thing has a bit more pop, the whole thing looks far more painted and you've still not put in that much work. The last step, um, and this is another little hack thing that I really like to use on terrain, I call it a filth wash. Basically, you go and buy a pot of the Laman Medium from Games Workshop um, and you mix in about five brushes, big, big, big brushfuls of Mumfang Brown. Right, so they end up with a very loose but opaque brown paint. Basically, you want to just keep putting the brown paint in until the entire pot is opaque. Yeah, but it needs to be very, very loose. And then you end up with uh, this kind of filth wash. And then you can just brush it on anywhere dirt would collect. And it looks really good. And anything like this that's supposed to be static, uh, that wouldn't move around, that would get pretty dirty. Um, now, as you're putting it on, by sort of this building here, when a photo was taken, this was still quite wet. So you can see how kind of vivid it looks and how kind of thick and gloopy and blotchy it looks in some places. But then it dries down. If you look at this building here on the left, that one was basically dry when the photo was taken. And you can see how basically the same amount of brown paint comes right down. All right, it looks, I think it looks really good in that building on the left. Um, and you can do as much or as little as you like, but it just makes things look really realistic and really grounded in uh, the, 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 the sort of setting of the, of the board as well. And then that's it. We got our full table of Octarius terrain all nicely and painted up and it didn't take that long. Honestly, the hard, the, the most time consuming bit is picking out the bits you want to pick out in colour. Uh, yes, I could have done more. Um, I could have done less. But you pick out the bits you want to pick out and then it really is that final dry brush. You know, the fact that you start off with a dry brush and not with a wash or anything else. You spray black, do your main dry brush, pick out your colours. All over dry brush and screaming skull and then the filth wash at the end and then it just looks it, i'm not going to say it's going to win any awards but it looks better than a lot of tables that i've played on it looks better than a lot of tables that i've played on because i've played on a lot of tables where the terrain is just one color and these have more than one color on them just one thing to add to my review of the octarius terrain because this is especially relevant for me because i've reason i'm painting this up is the I want to take it up north with me um, over Christmas. We're going away in a couple of days. And introduce some friends up there to Kill Team. And the Octarius terrain built up like this fits in the Octarius box. The lid's a little bit wobbly, but it's basically closed. Um, yeah, and you could fit a few more bits in there. You could probably get tokens and, and, and dice and, uh, you know, maybe even a Kill Team. Maybe, maybe a couple of Kill Teams if you're better at economising space than me. But the... The kill zone itself fits comfortably in the Octarius box that you buy, which is really cool and something I thought I'd add into my review. Okay, final thoughts. Um, I want you to think of painting terrain as a compromise, okay? Yes, you could paint every bit really carefully with the same amount of care and attention that you spend painting your miniatures. You could pick out all the little bits of detail, do really crispy edge highlights, and yeah, absolutely, the terrain pieces would look fantastic. But it would take you weeks and weeks and weeks to paint one of the big buildings. You've got four of those big buildings plus the smaller pieces. It would take you a long time to get enough terrain to fill a kill team table, right? And um, so I really think that... My method, or a similar kind of cheating method, is the way to go with terrain. You've seen my miniatures. Yeah, I take a lot more time over them. I think a nicely painted miniature, as well, really pops on this kind of terrain. Because the terrain, the the, the um, Screaming Skull dry brush has a way of making everything look slightly desaturated. And then it'll make your miniature look, in contrast, much more saturated. Um, the, the dirt just makes it blend into the table, makes your miniature kind of pop off the table. I feel it looks really good. As always with all these things, your mileage may vary, but this is how I got my terrain painted, and I think for the time that I've put in, I'm happy with the result. Um, not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, I think Zimbad's coming around with us on holiday now, because we both work at the school, but um, so we might get a battle report in on this, and I will do that up as a video, and get that up for you, and give you some thoughts on the Octarius terrain from a gameplay perspective. I know that I'm kind of um, late to the party on this one because Octarius came out 
ages ago. It's nearly going mean, to be nearly half a year ago now. And so this is for a lot of people the default kill team experience. And I felt I was missing out on that default kill team experience. So I've got this as an option. Doesn't mean that I won't be playing any more games on my Sector Mechanicus, because I certainly will. Um, and neither does it mean that I'm not going to paint up and build the, the, the Chalnaf terrain. I will do that as well. But I was just mindful, I guess, that the Chalnath stuff, those buildings, those Sanctorus buildings are really tall. Um, you know, they've had those in 40k for a while. And I was very mindful of the fact that they were not going to travel well to the other end of the country. Whereas Octarius is quite squat and it's just really good for that kill zone in a box. Off you go. Really good. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you know, leave a like. Write a comment, let me know if you, what you think of the Octarius terrain, let me know what you think about the concept of um, terrain as a compromise between the time you put in and how good of a result you want to get out at the end. Would you be happy to play on this table or do you, you know, do you like to paint your terrain up to a really high standard? Do you think that terrain should be painted as well as you paint your miniatures? Do you think people are copping out when they say, oh, don't worry about the terrain so much? I don't know. Um... And if you like the video, subscribe, and you'll get more of them, that sort of thing. All right, thanks, everyone. Hope you have a really, really great day. And as we are in the run-up to Christmas break, um, a really good Christmas as well. All right, thanks, guys. Cheerio, bye.